Hey folks, welcome back to this edition of Ben's Bits. Last week we discussed the possible effects of the extension of the eviction moratorium and how it's affected the approach that investors are taking in regard to their real estate holdings. And if you've not watched that video, be sure to catch up with it because we go further in depth as to why investors who've been around for a bit and have multiple rentals are deciding to hold off on acquiring more at this time and have been for a while now, really. Of course, not all of them, but the majority of them have because of a variety of reasons. But most recently, the extension of the eviction moratorium has uh, been the one that's blitzing the headlines. And there's a lot more to say on that topic, but we found that most investors already have a uh, very uh, decisive stance on the issue. So we're going to keep an eye out on that as it develops and keep you apprised of new developments. But we also certainly don't want to lose sight of other factors in the market as well, because life goes on as the expression goes. So with that said, we want to switch gears and uh, shift, uh, for lack of a better term, but shift our discussion to this week's topic, which is a deeper dive into the mindset or really the approach to investing and further refine the definition of the way we approach investing here, which is, you guessed it, investing for what matters most to you. And we've been having a lot of discussions lately involving what that means to the individual investor. And it really originates from a few bits ago where a comment was made, the earth isn't flat anymore. Uh, along with the difference between wealth generation and wealth preservation, and what was meant by that statement. And quite candidly, there are a boatload of, let's call them gurus, and that's used very lightly. And there are many talking heads out there that are teaching or stating a certain investment that they happen to specialize in is the path to wealth. And listen, they're very good at presenting those assets as huge money makers. And they probably were with what was available to the layman investor at that particular time. But there's a huge difference between wealth generation and wealth preservation. And that's the point we're really trying to drive home. You know, we've used the example of, of building a championship caliber team in many of these bits. And I'll use it again briefly, but if you were to build a team, and even if it wins a championship for, say, five years in a row, eventually you're going to need to either trade the players with new ones because they age out and they can't produce on the level of the newer players, or you have to retire those players and acquire new ones. If you're operating on the wealth generation principle, you'll want to be sure that the money you spend for that player has the highest return possible. And in doing so, you can get more players, more assets that also produce the highest return possible, which in turn gives you nice cash flow, wealth generation. But if you're operating on the wealth preservation model, you'll want to acquire players or assets that may cost more up front, but they give you consistency. And the trade-off is that you have larger outgoing expenses at first, but typically you're starting off with a larger payroll uh, anyway because the wealth is already there. It's already been generated, hence preserving the wealth. And that's the, the, that's the central theme here. Your investment should do one or the other. And if you're in the process of building your wealth, why would you get involved with investments that limit or outright prevent you from accelerating that process of building wealth in the first place? So that's it for this edition of Ben's Bits. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.